Oh, you might know our next guest from The League and the show Black Monday. He also hosts a very popular podcast, How Did This Get Made? It's Paul Shear joining us from the sexiest room we've ever had on the show for sure. What's up, Paul? Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. I am so excited to be here because for a little bit yesterday, as a Clippers fan, uh -oh. I thought I was going to have to come in here with my head <laughs> hung low. Uh, for ba Basically, for about three quarters and a half, oh, dear. I felt like I would have to come in here and make a lot of excuses. But I am very happy to be here after that triumphant comeback yesterday. Yeah, can we start there, by the way? Because you grew up in New York. Yes. Then you moved to L.A., but you mm -hmm. don't pick the Lakers. You pick the Clippers. Why? No, you can't. You can't pick the Lakers. It's a bandwagon choice. <laughs> Uh, I came from New York, a huge Knicks fan, but my thought was, if I'm going to be here in L.A. for a bit, mm. I want to bring my kids to games, and I want them to have a team. And so I picked the Clippers. They were exciting at that point, and it was like a, it was a fun kind of new version of the Clippers. And, uh, yeah, I've been happy ever since. <laughs> and uh, one of those reasons why is from one of those guys right there on your desk, Lou Will. I mean, Whee! come on, one of the best. Oh. This hasn't been, as a Clippers fan, 2018, 2019, that season, this season are my two favorites in recent memory. That's pretty Thank good. You, Paul. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, this is going to be a fun so, one. So, yeah. Paul, you grew up a Knicks fan. Yeah. Why not just stay a Knicks fan? That's tough. <laughs> because if I say Knicks fan and live in L.A., I got to watch 4 o'clock games, and then what? Like, I get fair excited point. once a, a year point. when my team comes to town. Right. I can't do that. I can't do that to my kids. Now my kids actually have a team that can go to multiple games. Like, I never liked that kind of thing where it's like uh, you'd see somebody in New York and be like, well, we're, you know, we're Minnesota fans. Like, well, yeah, you're not <laughs> Minnesota. Come on. I, one, of the best parts about, one of the best parts about being a Clippers fan is that people yell at me all the time when I'm wearing my Clippers stuff here in Los Angeles uh, in previous seasons. So, you know, you got to it, it's part of the city. It's part of what you live for. Makes sense. It makes sense. Paul, I know you've been you've been you've been to a ton of Clipper games. I got to ask, what's what's your favorite to memory? Ooh. Oh man, there was a great game. I feel like two years ago, or yeah, like it was, a, it was a comeback against the Celtics, and it was the first time. I think the Clippers have this energy where the stadium, it's in L.A., where everybody is coming into town, right? So whether it is New York or whether it is Boston or Sacramento, it always feels like somebody else's court sometimes. And um, mm -hmm. I remember like Pat Bev getting that crowd to be behind the Clippers on this comeback. Like we, we shut up a Boston crowd. And that to me was an amazing night just because it felt like the tide shifted. And from there forward, I feel like we've, we've kind of stayed a little bit as a Clipper stadium in that disgusting uh, crypto duck. <laughs> By the way, do you, was the 42 that Lou dropped, was that a big moment in the family? Did you guys Huge, celebrate with Kate? Yes. Yeah. I literally, well, you, the reason why you're getting to see some of this boudoir back here is because <laughs> I was running to go get my uh, my Lou Williams stuff. I have it in a closet and I was just getting it out and I was like, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. I was like going through everything real quick. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, that was huge. I mean, there's been so many great things. I mean, the, the comeback against Golden State, like amazing. Like so many great Clippers moments, and I feel like it's all kind of coming together right now, which is really exciting. Paul, besides Lou, who's your favorite <laughs> Clipper of all time? Oh, my gosh, of all time. Oof. You know, look, Lou, like, like I said, 2018, 2019 was huge for me. Um, I would say, like, Lou and Pat Bev, to me, <laughs> were the guys that I loved watching play. I just loved the energy. I felt like the toughest thing for you guys to do, at least from my vantage point, was like you guys carried that team. You carried everything about it. You created culture. And that to me is so important. Like I love the, you know, the the Blake Griffin years and everything <laughs> like that. But the, the the time when it was just you two that was really a special time, a special moment. Amazing. I love hearing it. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned Blake. He's obviously now post-career and during his career, he's dabbling into comedy and stand-up, and he's legit funny. Oh, I, I've and done shows with Blake. Hey, that's I've what I was going to ask. What, what, yeah. what kind of stuff have you done, and what do you, do you actually think? Is, it, is, it, is he actually funny, or is he just funny because he's Blake Griffin? No, he's actually funny. The first time I did anything with Blake, it was like me, Blake, and DeAndre Jordan. We were doing a... Uh, a live read, like we took the script of Space Jam and we put Blake in it instead of Michael Jordan. And then we all uh, cast all the characters around it. 
And uh, that was a blast. And then Blake has come on like improv shows that I've done at Largo. And and the thing is, is I think that you think like, OK, it's it's Blake. It's going to be whatever. But he actually is very funny. So yeah. and I think he cares about being funny. Like, you know, he's not like just doing it on a lark. Yeah, I think I think people say someone's funny, but we have different levels for it. And he actually no, is actually, funny he, he, in he, any yeah, world, which I kind of love. Well, it's, I think it's tricky because you have like people like, you know, like, like Lou, like Lou, you know, you're you make music. Right. And I think it's hard when you, people know you as one thing and then you also do something else. And I feel like but you can do it. You can split the difference like you and Dame. And I feel like I don't think there's any other comedians hmm. in the NBA. Like, I think there are a lot of funny players, but. No one else trying to do comedy mm. actively, right? Nah, I don't think so. No. <laughs> Not at I don't all. think. No. no. Paul, I've, I've played for both the Lakers and the Clippers. I know. So I've experienced firsthand <laughs> the way that this city treats one jersey opposed to yes. the other. Even though I think the Lakers are so ingrained in the culture of Los Angeles, what do you think it takes for the Clippers to become that team in L.A.? You know, for me, I feel like you got to start with the kids, right? You have to have something to grow up into. And I feel like that's what's going on now. When the when the Clippers and Bomber came in, he started uh, basically financing all these public parks, right? And putting up these right. Clippers uh, hoops. I feel like that's important. And the kids I know, like when Kawhi came to town and he gave those backpacks to every kid in public school. Like, I feel like that's the energy that you kind of need. LeBron will always be LeBron. And even though every Laker fan I talk to is like, LeBron's not a Laker. I don't there understand that mentality. Uh, but, and I love that. And look, the Lakers, what you, the Lakers are like the Dallas Cowboys. Like they are basketball. Like you can't, you can't knock them down, but you can only <laughs> expect to uh, compete and make it exciting. And I feel like that's what the Clippers have been trying to do. And and I think it's working. I won't make any Cowboys jokes right now because it's too soon for some. <laughs> it's um, painful. But it wasn't that long ago you got into a bit of a Twitter beef with Lakers fan Shannon Sharp, which is obviously oh, considered yeah. the Lord's work. Uh, where I'm uh, from, any regrets in that one? Never. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, how does Only that even that go I back and it. forth? Like, that's a tough guy <laughs> to get in a beef with. It is. It is a tough guy. And it's like, it's funny because, like, he likes to talk. He like you know, he likes to talk. And... I feel like most of my fights on Twitter have been <laughs> basically around Clippers stuff. So uh, it's fun. I mean, because it doesn't mean anything either. And uh, yeah, I mean, maybe one day I'll go on Club Shay Shay and oh, I'll do a three and a half hour interview and yes. uh, break down all my beefs with everybody in the world. Are you going to attack every white comic that ever lived, Paul? <laughs> it's going to be the best three and a half hours ever. Uh, right, they did it. They did a, 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 I don't know. I guess a poll not that long ago in the off season yeah. talking about who drinks the most in arena. This actually shocked this. me because the Clippers not only drink the most, they also eat the most. And when I think of LA, I don't think of eating, but are you shocked by that about your fans? I was because we share a stadium with the Lakers. Yeah, that's interesting. Are you telling me that they don't drink and eat as much as us? Because whenever I go to a Lakers game, people seem pretty drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked by I that. Would th I'm surprised not like Detroit because we're just getting wasted yeah. watching that team play. Yeah. Okay, that's. Too I don't. Hard. I don't. I didn't know we had a, a culture of drinking. I didn't know you. Like, I like that you guys feel it. like that. That that's not the vibe I get when I played there. Learn that today. No, that I mean, that my, I'd also argue too. It's like you're right. There's not like really a culture of drinking, and it's like everyone's driving. To go that's to that Staples point. Center, like it's like right. you know you got to come true. into it. Like that's a very much a car city. I, the I cops don't like, should just I don't sit like there that. and have a field day. Yeah, leaving, just leaving. sit up in the parking <laughs> garage and wait. Good call. Yeah. Wait, way to help the cops, Chandler. <laughs> yeah, Paul. <laughs> your Clippers are currently fourth in the West. I was yes. PG, Kawhi, Harden. They all been playing pretty well. Is does this team have enough to win a championship mm. this season? I would never say anything that would jinx any opportunity in any way. I'm just enjoying the ride. That's but all yes. I want to do. I'm enjoying the ride. Like, look, every team has a potential to do anything, really. Uh, but no, um, Not I think as a Clippers fan, like, I am frightened out of my mind, right? Oh, my God, this is fun. But when will something terrible happen? Like, I, I, I'm a Jets fan as well. And Aaron's like, everyone's like, you're excited about Aaron Rodgers? You're excited? I'm like, no, I'm not. Because I know what's going to happen, something terrible. And that happened when the first five plays of the, of the, of the first game. So, <laughs> yeah. like, I, I am cautiously optimistic. I'm enjoying everything. And that's all I'm going to say. Like, I know that Shaq was, like, pushing PG to be like, if you want a championship, you got to say it. I'm like, no. Because the minute Chuck says that we're going to get a championship, we're going down. Because <laughs> so we got to keep our head low. Just keep on winning games and move forward. 
Well, well, listen, I actually like the Clippers coming out of the West this year. I just feel like they're, they're loaded with talent. And, and with that, they're opening their new arena next year. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you been able to see it? Have you been able to tour it? And how excited are you to not finally have a home or your own and not share an arena with the Lakers? I'm very excited. Uh, the into, uh, I always forget how to pronounce it, but like the Intuit. In It Dome or Intuit Dome. Intuit. Or, Intuit. Uh, Intuit Dome. Intuit. Yeah. Uh, Intuit. The Intuit Dome. I got my seats. I got my season tickets all locked up. And I'm excited that they're doing weird stuff. Like the wall is yes. amazing to me. It's basically all behind <laughs> one basket. Just... It's great you can't theory. be another yeah. fan. Yeah, it's great, it's great in theory. theory. Yeah, it's like, and I, I think that like, it's fun to go to these places and just feel like, oh, we're going to try to do something different. And everything I've seen from Bomber, it seems like if you present him two nice options, he's like, yeah, yeah, we'll do them both. You know, <laughs> so I feel like that whole stadium is going to be pretty magical and exciting. And whenever you get to see a new stadium, it's always kind of cool. I just was in uh, Golden, you know, I just saw a Golden State game last year, and that stadium is beautiful. Chase the arena. Uh, it's great, you know, so I feel like it's exciting whenever you open up a new stadium and hopefully they'll bring some more culture in there. The thing and the thing I'm most excited about as a Clippers fan, as an L.A. driver, is that apparently Bomber has made some agreement with the Department of Traffic in Los Angeles. So they're going to be opening up lanes to Inglewood. So what? four lanes mm. in and four lanes out and they can be able to control all the stoplights. So you don't have any traffic once you get off wow. the uh, highway. That Sheesh. I was like. That's like, I mean, that's really going to feast on that new highway. First of all, <laughs> well, yeah, you know you're in L.A. when that's the most exciting thing you've ever heard, and you're, you're like, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, wow. Oh, oh my God. they do that for I, every highway, not just the yeah. Inglewood? Right. I know. I really, I mean, like, all we need is Bomber to buy more things. Yeah. But I, if anyone, yeah. if you are a, <laughs> if you are just please. a thing, <laughs> where, if you've gone to a Taylor Swift concert, if you've gone to a, a game. you know, a Rams game, yeah. you know it's just like a nightmare. It sucks. It's brutal. Yeah. And there's, no, so there's one thing in and out. Ugh. So I feel like this is a good thing. I feel like Bomber understands like it's it's a commitment asking everybody to go there, uh, you know. But like let's let's do it. That is awesome. It's like the Dodger game. The Dodger. I love exactly. going to I, I can't. No I won't out. do it. I'd rather just sit there and watch them on TV. Yep. Because getting oh, out is the worst thing in the whole world. I, I have, uh, yeah, I live kind of near the Dodgers, and it's like you feel that traffic. It just, it like, it just, it, like, I feel the energy of it just, just on my house. Sucking mm -hmm. through the I've it's never just finished the a Dodgers game. No, no you no, either got to go can't. super early and leave early or go late and leave early. But you can't yeah. leave early if You're it's You're not the going World on Series. time like, you ever. Can't, like, no, you can't do that. Um, I'll right. tell you this. As yeah. a dad, it, what is, makes it all the worse is uh, once you get in your car and your kid's like, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh. That's the worst. And you're like, oh, I don't know. I know we're going to be in this car forever. Forever. So they have to get out, go back in, go mm. bathroom, get back in. Shit your pants, Although a kids. lot of trips. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Chandler. I don't know if that's I didn't know you could curse on this. Now we're in a whole different interview. Ch Chandler has a special contract. Yeah, there's always that option. He's allowed to do whatever he wants. Um, the podcast, how did this get made? Yes. You talk about awful movies, but you also had Space Jam on there. I thought Space Jam was supposed to be a good movie. Was I wrong? Yes. What? Do I Space Jam is terrible. Right? Space Jam is terrible. <laughs> like it, it, culturally, it's great. Like they got great uniforms. Go buy those uniforms. But it's a it's a bad. I mean, look, I love MJ, the best. Not a great actor. <laughs> uh, I, we did that in Chicago, <laughs> and we had to basically say to people in Chicago, like, face it, it's not. He's not, he's not good. This is not good. Bill Murray's funny in it, but I mean, you know, it's weird. It's a weird movie. So Watching you really don't like I, the new one with I, LeBron because that was yeah. hot garbage. Uh, let me tell you something. Don Cheadle, a uh, friend of mine, uh, my co-star on Black Monday. Uh, Space Jam 2, interesting movie. <laughs> interesting movie. That's a nice way to put it. I thought Space Jam was good. So maybe it, maybe it's Space just like Jam nostalgic. Kid, it's our kid. Know. Yeah. It's, if you watch it, if I watch it tonight, we watch it tonight, that's we'd probably we think do. it's bad. We watch it again as an adult. It's probably horrible. Yeah, that's it. that's what it is. Like it, it is fun because it's like, look, as a kid, like you want to watch like Michael Jordan in a movie. But if you yeah. sat down and watched it, be like, Huh? What's going on? Man, Bugs Bunny. Now we're gonna watch it. Yeah, my we got homework. My favorite, my favorite joke of the whole movie is he is Michael Jordan in the movie, and he is living in like a two-bedroom house <laughs> in like Pasadena. Or right? like I'm like, what? This you gotta at least show me that this is. Oh, I don't funny. care that he's playing baseball. You know there was rumors that his house. his kid was Eric Gordon in that movie. Do you ever hear that rumor? No. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Really? I don't know if it was actually Jordan, it's, but they were saying that kid playing him. Yeah. That was Eric Gordon. Okay, how do All we not know that? All I'm going to say is this. 
I don't know. Never research it because it's better if we don't yeah. debunk yeah. it. Let's, Let's just stick it. That's the theory. theory of my life, Paul. I don't like to research anything. Just go with <laughs> yeah. it. Just guess. I just learned something new. <laughs> the internet's I'm, 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 I'm going down this rabbit hole. Yeah, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah, it it looks just hole. like Eric Gordon. Makes sense. <laughs> Checks on. out. So, Paul, a few years ago, you shot a scene for uh, your movie, Daddy's Home, um, at oh, halftime yeah. of a Pelicans-Lakers game. Ooh. What was that experience like for you? Well, first of all, it was great and terrible because it's the first time that Kobe had agreed to uh, be in a movie. He said people have used him in movies all the time, but he never agreed to it. And that was the game that he re-injured himself. And that was like the beginning of the end of, oh. of Kobe. So that was like, I always live with this idea of like Kobe going like, I never agreed to do a movie. I'm excited to do this. It'd be fun. Immediately gets injured. Oh. And you feel like, oh, like I just, oh, no. I live with that. Like not guilt because it's not my movie, but it was like, it was, a, it was a terrible moment, and he was so excited to do it. But for me, doing that scene in that Pelicans game was so much fun because no one knew what was going on. We didn't show that there was a movie being filmed. What? I think people thought that Will Ferrell was like a drunk guy at first. All the sports blogs started running with the story that Will Ferrell was ejected from a Pelicans game for being too drunk because he was supposed to hit a free throw and then in the middle of his free throw, he like hit a, a cheerleader in the face with a basketball. <laughs> and we had to do all this kind of creative movement to get a real basketball out of my hands and put a fake one into his hands. And we did all this movement. And the first time when that basketball hit that cheerleader's face, you could hear like a pin drop. It was like, oh, <gasps> no one knew what was going on. And then seeing Will get dragged out, people were confused. The second that's, time we did it, they caught on, but it was amazing. But still, that's crazy that you could even get that far without anyone figuring it out. That's it's awesome. So yeah. LA. I, well, because you know what? Well, no, this is a New Orleans. Oh, it's in New Orleans. So that yeah, was, you're right. yeah. So I think what was so fun about it was like there was an energy to it, like where people aren't really paying attention to what's going on in the court during the game. And that's why then all of a sudden they all saw it. They all got shocked. It was great. More God, pranks of NBA games. That's so good. Uh, Paul, this has been a pleasure. Make sure you check out the podcast, How Did This Get Made? And. Pre-order the book, Joyful Recollections yes. of Trauma. Of trauma. Yes, Beautiful thank you so title. much. I got a book. <laughs> Thanks so, so much, everybody. Thank you so it's much. We'll be back. We'll run it back in a minute. Run it up. Run it back. Run it back. Run it back.